So the reading from chapter <clears throat> ten, verse fifteen. Swam evat manatmanam, the tatum purushotama, both of Havan of Bhutesha, a deva jagatate. Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency, O Supreme Person, origin of all, Lord of all beings, Lord of gods, Lord of the universe. So, just uh, background 10.14. Um, it tells Krishna saying that I totally accept this truth all that you have told me um, and he says nobody can understand your personality because not demons can understand your personality uh, <clears throat> so this is how actually we have to accept Bhagavad Gita I totally accept not I partially accept I accept something that I like I reject something I dislike no, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. And accepting in Vedic culture means following. Unlike in today's world where we say, huh, I accept, but I will not follow. And that is that that kind of behavior didn't exist in the past. So accept means uh, implement. Arjuna here is saying that I accept everything that you are saying fully. No selective uh, and he's also saying neither the demigods nor demons can understand your personality. So, I don't understand you. <clears throat> Indeed, you alone know yourself. So, who can understand you? You alone know yourself. Because you are Bhuta Bhavana, Bhutesha, Deva, Deva, Jagatpate. Because you are the Supreme Person. You are the origin of all. You are the Lord of all beings. You are God of Gods. You are the Lord of the Universe. Who can understand you? Nobody can understand you. You alone know yourself. <clears throat> by your own internal potency means Krishna so Krishna's uh, Krishna's three energies uh, Antaranga, Bahiranga and Tatastha so Antaranga Shakti is the whole spiritual world is uh, made of Antaranga Shakti, internal potency and all Krishna's Shaktis actually which operate in the Spiritual realm belong to the internal potency. Mm -hmm. uh, so this itself is a very complicated uh, topic. Uh, how Krishna himself knows himself, but he doesn't know himself. So we will not talk about that right now. But yeah, Arjuna is saying nobody can understand you yourself can know you, yourself. Right? Nobody else can understand you. <clears throat> but what? The Supreme Lord Krishna can be known by persons who are in relationship with him through the discharge of devotional service like Arjuna and his followers. So Prabhupada is making it clear, saying that yes, though demons and demigods can't understand Krishna, but those who are in relationship with Krishna in devotional service, which are basically devotees, they can understand Krishna. Huh? Persons of demoniac or atheistic mentality cannot know Krishna. Mental speculation that leads one away from the Supreme Lord is a serious sin. Mental speculation means not um, basically uh, restricted understanding of Krishna. Saying that, okay, Supreme Lord is only Shakti, his potency, um, Brahman, and rejecting his Bhagavan feature. So this is all mental speculation because it is not based on Shastra. But it is based on selective parts of the Shastra, not accepting it fully. <clears throat> so Prabhupada is saying it's a serious sin. Don't speculate about the Supreme Lord. Hear about him from people who know him, that is devotees. And one who does not know Krishna should not try to comment on the Bhagavad Gita. This is a big problem. In India, there are so many versions of Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Everybody writes my own Bhagavad Gita. Everybody thinks they know Krishna. Mm -hmm. One who does not know Krishna should not try to comment on Bhagavad Gita. Who knows Krishna? Only a devotee knows Krishna. So one who writes about commentary on Bhagavad Gita without being a devotee of Krishna cannot really understand Bhagavad Gita. Because Bhagavad Gita is a statement of Krishna. And since it is a science of Krishna, it should be understood from Krishna as Arjuna understood it. 
should not be received from atheistic persons. And most of the people in modern world are atheistic. They don't believe in God and everything is our strength, our ability, etc., etc. They they write uh, commentary on Bhagavad Gita. It's completely flawed. Stated in Shivan Bhagavatam, Madanti Tatat Vijas Tattam Mirnana Matvayam Ramneti Paramatmeti the Supreme Truth is realized in three aspects. In the person of Brahman, localized Paramatma, and at last, Supreme Person of Godhead. So at the last stage of understanding that truth, one comes to the Supreme Person of Godhead. A common man or even a liberated man who is realized in personal Brahman or localized Paramatma may not understand God's personality because they don't accept him as a person. They just accept him as energy. Such men, therefore, may endeavor to understand the Supreme Person from the verses of Bhagavad Gita, which are spoken by this person, Krishna. <clears throat> Sometimes the impersonists accept Krishna as Bhagavan or they accept his authority. Yet, many liberated persons cannot understand Krishna as Purushottam or the Supreme Person. So here Prabhupada is saying, Sometimes impersonists accept Krishna's authority. But they cannot understand him as the supreme person. Again, the focus here is on person. Krishna is a person. <clears throat> but somebody might say, I will accept the authority of the supreme of Bhagavan, but I will not accept that he is a person, that he is a supreme person. Which means again, their understanding is limited to the fact that God is some, you know, like unlimited power. Understand or they don't accept that Bhagavan is a person. Therefore, Arjuna addresses him as Purusha Uttama, Purusha Uttama. One who is Uttama, the Supreme among Purusha. Purusha means person. <coughs> Yet one still may not understand that Krishna is the father of all living beings. So here Prabhupada is explaining why Arjuna is using so many words. So he says, first he says Purusha Uttama. Then he says Bhuta Bhavana. Bhutesha. Bhuta Bhavana means origin of everything. Bhutesha means lord of everything. So here he is explaining why Arjuna is using, is addressing Krishna by so many names. See, this is the insight of the Acharyas. We understand. We will simply read. We will simply read. Oh, okay. Uh, Supreme person, origin of all, lord of all beings. Okay. Fine. But here Prabhupada is saying <coughs> that first Arjuna addresses him as Purushottama. Yet still one may not understand that Krishna is the father of all living. So some might accept that he is a person. But they might not accept that he is the father of all living entities. Therefore, Arjuna tests him as Bhuta Bhavana. So that you understand, okay, he is Purushottama. He is also the father of all living entities. If one comes to know him as the father of all living entities, still one may not know him as a supreme control, controller. Therefore, he is addressed here as Bhutesha. Even if one knows that Krishna is the supreme controller, still one may not know that he is the origin of all living entities. Therefore, he is addressed here as Deva Deva. Even if one knows him as the worshipful God of all living gods, one may not know that he is the supreme proprietor of the Therefore, he is addressed as Jagat. Thus, the truth about Krishna is established in this verse by the realization of Arjuna. So we should follow in the footsteps of Arjuna to understand Krishna. Is, <coughs> see, these, this is insight into the thought process of a devotee who is Arjuna. Why Arjuna addressed? Because this is a conversation. And when we are having conversation, there's no, there are no words which are used without meaning or reason. You might not be able to understand the reason why Arjuna used all these you know, various ways to address Krishna. But because Prabhupada is also pure devotee, he is able to understand another pure devotee, Arjuna's mind, in terms of why he is using all these ways to address Krishna. <clears throat> this is the reason why we need to follow purpose of Acharyas. Right? If suppose say we simply read this, how much understanding will we get as compared to reading the whole? Okay. 10.16. Aptum arhasya sheshena asheshena divya hyatma vibhutayaha yabir vidu vibhuti bir lokan imam stvam vyapya tishtasi. Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these words. <coughs> now Arjuna is coming to see, yeah, nobody else understands you. 
you yourself understand yourself so you please tell and uh, now tell in detail about your divine opulences mm. and specifically saying pervade all these words this was it appears that arjuna is already satisfied with his understanding of the supreme person of god krishna by krishna's grace arjuna's personal experience intelligence and knowledge and whatever else a person may have and through all these agencies he has understood krishna to be the supreme person of god because he is already accepted he is already accepted in the beginning of this chapter saying that i accept you as a supreme lord for him there is no doubt yet he is asking krishna to explain his all pervading nature why people in general and the impersonalists in particular concern themselves mainly with the all pervading nature of the supreme so arjuna is asking krishna how he exists in his all pervading aspect through his different energies so the beauty uh, so impersonalists believe in krishna's shakti which is is sarvavyapi is all pervading now here arjuna is asking krishna you tell how you pervade all the three worlds which means whatever is pervading the three worlds is coming from you which means obviously the person from whom the energy is coming becomes more prominent and because he is the source of that energy and arjuna is a devotee he is um, asking this so that he can establish krishna's position as a supreme person one should know that this is being asked by arjuna on behalf of the common people 10.1 sir कथम विद्यामहम सदा परिचित Now, if Krishna wanted Arjuna to think of him as impersonal Brahman, he would have told. But Krishna tells something different. Should be here. Now, in spite of Bhagavad Gita being so explicit, still people want to misinterpret and say, "No, no, no, Krishna is not supreme. Then Brahman is supreme. <clears throat> Brahman is energy coming from Krishna." But they don't want to accept this. Very stubbornly stuck with impersonalism. <clears throat> <clears throat> but for as it is stated in the previous chapter the supreme person about it is covered by his yoga maya yoga maya samagata only surrendered souls and devotees can see him literally we can see krishna we have to become qualified as of now we are seeing krishna by hearing about him but we come to a stage where we can really see krishna now arjuna is convinced that he is friend krishna is the supreme god but he wants to know the general process by which the all pervading lord can be understood by the common man common man including the demons and atheists cannot know krishna because he is guarded by his yoga maya energy so for example when krishna was present on this mortal world this mortal world so many people know new krishna but they could not understand that he is the supreme person of god But Krishna demonstrates his uh, Vishwarupa to Duryodhana, different Vishwarupa. But still, even after that, he doesn't accept that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Huh? Dhritarashtra also knew that Dhritarashtra knew Krishna is the Supreme Lord, but he still didn't accept him. So Krishna's yoga maya energy works in such a way that people who are not really, you know, wanting to accept Krishna wholeheartedly. Yoga Maya energy will just block such people cannot come to Krishna. Again, these questions are asked by Arjuna for their benefit. Common men, superior devotee is concerned not only for his own understanding, but for the understanding of all men. This is what Prabhupada wants us to do. Wants us to become superior devotee and not be self-centered. Not be just worried about our own spiritual. Be concerned about everybody else's welfare. So Arjuna, out of his mercy, because he is a Vaishnava and devotee, is opening for the common man the understanding of the all pervasive mystery. This is Arjuna's mercy to the world. He is asking this question. He addresses Krishna specifically as yogin. 
because Sri Krishna is the master of the Yoga Maya in that way, which is covered and uncovered to the common man. The common man has no love for Krishna. Common man who has no love for Krishna cannot always think of Krishna. That's what it means. Only when we have love for Krishna, we can always think of Krishna. Therefore, he has to think materially. We think materially because we don't have love for Krishna. <clears throat> and we have to think about something. And we think mostly about things we love. If we are not thinking about Krishna and we are thinking about material things, that means we love material things. And we think about material Krishna is considering the mode of thinking of the materialistic persons of the world. The words Keshu Keshu Chabhavesh refer to material nature. Because materialists cannot understand Krishna. They are advised to concentrate the mind on physical things and try to see how Krishna is in the physical reference. Mm. So this is the very beginning stage to bring materialists to Krishna consciousness. That Krishna's opulences are described so that they get connected because they are more attracted to things around them. With material. And when we say, okay, this beautiful uh, waterfall, this beautiful nature is Krishna's opulence. And they say, oh, okay, fine, I like this beautiful nature. Uh, okay, and if it's coming from Krishna, okay, then I'll eventually like Krishna also. Right? <clears throat> and so they will establish a connection between material nature and Krishna. As we say. So this is the beginning stage for neophytes who can't understand our Again, please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulence. I am never satiated in hearing about you. For the more I hear, the more. This is the key. The day we reach this stage, Think that I am not saturated in hearing. I want to hear the whole day. I want to hear more and more. I want to taste the nectar of Krishna. Take the taste the nectar of his Bila. Taste the nectar of his qualities. Now we are never satiated in hearing nonsense mundane stuff. And we want to keep hearing more and more some nonsense news. Something this, that, and all that, some cricket match, some movie, some question of some film star, some question, of, uh, or maybe people might be slightly more refined and they want to talk about music and drama and culture and this and that and all that, but it's not connected to Krishna. So we need to reach a stage where we are so eager, we want to hear. More and more, then we are making <clears throat> A similar statement was made to Sutta Goswami by the Rishis of Naimisharan and Ited Vaishnava. That statement is Vayam Tuna Vitra Pyama Uttamashloka Vikrame Yachunva Tamva Satnanam Swadu Swadu Pade Pade. One can never be satiated, even though one continuously hears the transcendental person of Krishna, who is glorified by his name. I mean, this is literally true, right? Uh, in fact, you know the way it works. Eventually, first time we hear about Krishna's past times, um, it just comes across as okay, some mundane stuff. Okay, I born and we think with friends and he's naughty and this and that and all. And slowly, when we start hearing, then again we hear, and then slowly we'll understand. Oh, Krishna is so free. Then slowly, then we'll understand Krishna. So, you know, gradually we will understand and connect uh, all his qualities to his pastimes and then try to start understanding Krishna as a person. And it takes us a long time. <clears throat> and when we really understand Krishna's sweetness and when we start reading his, reading his pastimes, and start to relate his sweetness in all his pastimes, then we will feel like, whoa, this is amazing. I never, I could never think about it this way. 
then we want to understand we want to hear more we understand that it it's like a deep well <laughs> krishna understanding of krishna is like a deep bottomless well keep on understanding and understand then there is more to understand you understand some more there is still more to understand this goes on and on <clears throat> those who have entered into a transcendental relationship with krishna relish at every step the descriptions of the past and the part so this is so beautiful because in every past time each and every devotee will look at sim- a, a single past time from their own view point for example um, krishna might be getting tied up by mother Ishoda in Damodar Leela. Now his friends will look at it differently. Now his mother herself will look at it differently. Gopis will look at it differently. And for example, Kaliya, the feeling of Kaliya. Everybody has their own vision or own uh, way of looking at Krishna's past. What he is doing, why he is doing. So based on a devotee's transcendental relationship with Krishna, which something we don't understand today we don't know what our relationship is but when we come to the stage of understanding it is called swarupa siddhi then we will look at krishna in a particular way based on our relationship yes so this is yes arjuna is interested in hearing about krishna what we remains as the all pervading supreme so arjuna is Interested only in one part, right? Specifically, because he wants to establish the fact that all these opulences are coming from Krishna. This is the focus of this point. Now, as far as Amritam nectar is concerned, any narration or statement concerning Krishna is just like nectar. See, this itself should cause closer to Krishna. <clears throat> the fact that Acharya and Sri Rupa is making a statement. He is saying that any narration or statement concerning Krishna is just like me. If we are not able to realize this nectar, it is only our uh, issue with us. There is a gap in us. There is this contamination in us because of which we cannot uh, see how everything about Krishna is nectar. this nectar can be perceived by practical experience so this is so beautiful what does this mean this nectar can be perceived by practical experience means what that we can actually experience this nectar we can experience krishna's nectar how we can experience krishna's nectar because when we take up any service for krishna and typically i say that we go beyond our comfort zone when we go beyond our comfort zone pick up something big bigger than what we can what we normally manage and engage sincerely in that service just to please krishna krishna will shower his nectar on us he will show how he likes that and he reciprocates he reciprocates and it is reciprocation happens in multiple ways but the person who is experiencing the reciprocation he will understand saying oh okay this is krishna so practically you can experience and krishna will show to us saying that hey i am present i'm watching modern stories fiction and histories are different from the transcendental past and the past in that one will tire of hearing mundane stories but one never tires of hearing it is for this reason only that the history of the whole universe is replete with references to the past and the incarnation of god the puranas are histories of bygone ages that relate the past times of various incarnations of the god the puranas are not mythology Unfortunately, in India, most very educated people also don't understand the difference between mythology and history. They believe firmly in Krishna, Rama, and all that. They say that okay, this is there in our mythology. The word myth means that it is somebody's imagination; that it's not true. So we have to use the word history, not mythology. History means something which has occurred in the past. 
This way, the reading may have matter remains forever fresh despite repeated because it's connect, connected to the Supreme. Never get bored. Yeah. Okay, Sri Ram, Sri Ram, Sri Unless somebody has any questions, points to me. Hare Krishna Prabhu, in the uh, first 17 purpose, mm -hmm. uh, Papa mentions the uh, only surrendered souls and devotees can see him. Here actually mm -hmm. surrendered soul and uh, devotee, both one and the same, right? Why it is? Uh, yes, one could have surrendered himself, uh, but might have might not have yet become a devotee. As in, he's just in the process. Devotee means pure devotee. Correct. Okay. So we surrender to Krishna, but we still not completely reach the pure devotion state. Uh, so one who surrenders to Krishna also, if he surrendered soul, then he can understand Krishna to the death. I think he is depending on Krishna, but he still not reached the perfection. Because whenever Prabhupada uses the word devotee, it only means pure devotee. So just we can think about it as just different stages. That's what that's what I understand. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Surrendered souls and devotees can be can have a different meaning as well, right, Prabhu? Yeah, like what you say. Like, uh, like when you look at Advaita Vedanta, when you say the soul is where the God resides, so that is your true self. Mm, yeah, but actually, it's uh, okay. So it's a bit complicated. So actually, uh, Lord resides. Mm, not in the soul per se. He resides beside the soul. This hmm. is Paramatma. Yes. Uh, Paramatma hmm. is present in the body of the Jiva. And yeah. he, he is present uh, beside the soul. Correct. Right? No, but we are talking about soul. Right? What kind of soul? Soul could be either a surrendered soul or, the, or a soul not surrendered. Right? Which means conditioned entities, which means those people in this material world who are living for their own sense gratification and have no nothing to do whatsoever with God or uh, or anything, they are not surrendered. They are just conditioned, spoiled souls. And they just lost their way. Right? Huh. So, here there is a distinction being made between an ordinary conditioned soul and a surrendered soul. So okay. the process is that first there is conditioned soul. Conditioned soul is somebody who is willingly moved away from how to enjoy. This is a conditioned soul. Right? Hmm. Now when the conditioned soul uh, he is making progress towards the Lord, the first stage is that uh, he understands first he hears and slowly then he comes to the stage. Okay, okay there is a Supreme Lord, uh, the Bhagwan, and I want to surrender unto him. Right? So, which means he voluntarily gives up his freedom or his free will to enjoy independent of the Lord. So, then we call that soul a surrender. Okay. He surrendered his free will. Right? And saying that, okay, no, no, I want to serve Krishna. I want to serve the Lord. Because that's what is right for me. And it is just the beginning, possibly, process of I want to surrender. Uh, but I am not fully surrendered. I am not still fully reached the perfection, which is the perfection is that of a position of a pure devotee. So there is conditioned soul, there is surrendered soul, and there is a pure soul or a pure devotee who has achieved mm -hmm. the perfection of his, you know, he lost all his contamination and he just knows who he is, what he is, and is completely engaged in serving Lord with love. That is the perfect state. So this is like various stages that a soul moves through before he becomes uh, liberated and develops love.
थैंक यू प्रभु